All right, guys, so it's not looking good. Things are heating up in the Middle East again. At this time, the US is sending more troops and submarines. We essentially have a standing army in the Gulf ready to take action. There are troops on land, aircraft carriers with fighter jets, and now a nuclear submarine. And if you ever wondered if there's a military buildup, this is it. In our lead story today, US nuclear sub offers a show of force in the Middle East. Apparently, the submarine is moving through the Suez Canal towards CENTCOM's area of responsibility. And here's the interesting question. Is it now in the Mediterranean or the Arabian Sea? Are they looking to beef up Israel or patrol the Strait of Hormuz, which is the major shipping lane? And here's the thing about nuclear subs. It is meant to be hidden away, constantly patrolling and moving around the world. You're supposed to keep everyone guessing about its location. So this is most definitely a show of force to warn enemies of Israel and the United States. But that isn't all. The US has also deployed 1,000 American soldiers to the region. Missile defense systems are also heading to Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Jordan, Iraq, Qatar, and the UAE. And that covers more or less all the countries with US military presence. And this is a military buildup because things are getting very unstable in the region. Multiple threats are coming from Iran and Hezbollah with the Houthis firing missiles at Israel. Essentially, the entire Arab world isn't very happy with the state of affairs. They have called for immediate ceasefire, but Blinken keeps saying no. The UN Security Council resolutions aren't being passed either, so there's no stopping the chaos. Eight countries now have pulled their ambassadors from Israel, which has to be viewed as a strong rebuke. Amongst those countries, even Jordan and Turkey have put their ambassadors away. Now, Jordan is a designated ally of the United States, while Turkey is part of NATO. And this kind of shows that the Arab world is starting to draw a line in the sand and the US is losing support in the region. And I have even more breaking news. This just came out a few hours ago. And if you think America is done hitting Iranian targets, you'd be wrong. According to the Pentagon, the United States just carried out new airstrikes on the Iranian facility in Syria again. They have hit Syria again on Biden's orders. Lloyd Austin says this is a precision self-defense strike in response to a series of attacks against US troops in Iraq and Syria. And we have said before that the US will defend their bases if attacked. Every time an Iranian proxy hits the US, this will force a retaliation and that in itself will cause even more counter-strikes. So you can see this deadly feedback loop, tit for tat, which threatens to ramp up escalations. And this is a real flashpoint that could trigger everything from oil embargoes to new fronts being opened. And let's talk about this problem. Until a ceasefire happens, we can expect more and more attacks from the Iranian proxies. America has to retaliate or they'll look weak and lose even more influence in the Middle East. So both sides are essentially trapped in this box, right? Where you gotta hit back or the other side wins. The big problem is escalation where someone just miscalibrates. Now, all the talk about embargoes, oil supply cuts, and blockades all stems from this. It is not an economic strike that we have to be worried about. It's a military disaster that could prompt an economic response. So these two things are not mutually exclusive. So while the US struck Syria again, we are now seeing more escalations from another Iranian proxy. The Houthis have shot down a US surveillance drone over the Red Sea. That's the region immediately south of the Suez Canal. And the attack follows an episode last month where a US destroyer shot down several ballistic missiles and drones launched towards Israel. The US objectives are the polar opposite of the Houthis or Hezbollah. So this daily cycle isn't gonna stop. America is pushing for humanitarian pause but the Middle East wants a ceasefire. And you can't square this circle, right? It's literally impossible until one side concedes. And I don't see the US budging from their position. In a story from Bloomberg, Blinken's latest Middle East mission shows more labor than payoff. And if you see mainstream media giving up hope, you know that things are truly getting bleaker. And the big problem is Blinken losing control and influence over Israel. US pressure on Israel isn't working. Even getting a humanitarian pause now is becoming very difficult. Blinken is on a one-man mission that satisfies no one, right? The Arab states wants to cease fire. Israel doesn't want to pause. US influence looks like it's crumbling and crumbling fast. Israel, they kind of have a blank check for America and Netanyahu. He is cashing it in. Almost immediately after Blinken visited Israel, Netanyahu went on TV and rejected the idea. I made clear that we are continuing full force and that Israel refuses a temporary ceasefire, which does not include the release of our hostages. 
And talk about adding insult to injury. Even Joe Biden now is asking Israel for a pause in the Gaza fighting. I think he knows the stakes at hand, right? If a ceasefire doesn't happen soon, or at least a pause, the entire Middle East will start losing respect for the United States. China is already starting to make friends and grow their influence in the Gulf. Russia is also turning against Israel to side with the Arab world. They are getting a stronger foothold in the region as the US loses influence. And if America doesn't broker some sort of deal with Netanyahu and do it soon, things will spiral out of control. And here's how bad things are truly getting. Remember the strike that hit Lebanon a few days ago? Well, that is inflaming things in a country. In a report by Reuters, a Hezbollah lawmaker has said the resistance will respond double to any aggression that targets civilians and it hasn't yet shown all its weight. This is the immediate danger the Middle East is in, an endless cycle of escalation and retaliation. America has to defuse the situation somehow and do it fast. They must broker a deal. And if we zoom into the situation in Israel, things are looking extremely messy, it's looking extremely volatile. As Israel continues their operation in Gaza, we have multiple reports of attacks all over the country. There's those small orange circles that are littering the map on the left. Then on the right side, we can see a string of attacks along the Israel-Lebanon border as well. We are on the brink of a multi-front war, and this has the potential to escalate out of control. There are two aircraft carrier strike groups and a nuclear submarine nearby, so any response from America will be legendary. And that's why I find it very incredulous that the market isn't pricing in this risk. Stocks are back above the pre-October 7 levels, which simply doesn't make any sense. The market is factoring the Federal Reserve's pause on interest rates more than this geopolitical disaster. But let's talk about the diplomatic front because things are looking even bleaker there. Israel isn't listening to the United States, which is very worrying. The White House is now scolding Israel and giving them a warning. During Blinken's Middle East tour, he told the world that Israel wouldn't be interested in occupying Gaza after the war. But moments later, Netanyahu gave America the shock of their lives. He literally came out saying that Israel will take responsibility for Gaza security for an indefinite period. And how long will that be? We have no idea. Will it be for one month? one year or five years. So just imagine the horror on Blinken's face the moment Netanyahu said that. He probably fell off a chair. Israel also reaffirmed there won't be a ceasefire. Listen to this. There will be no ceasefire, general ceasefire, in Gaza without the release of our hostages. As far as tactical little pauses and our here and our there, we've had them before. So a ceasefire is off the table for now, until the hostages are released and the most we'll get are hour-long pauses. And this is freaking America out because Israel's stance ramps up the threat of escalations from Iranian proxies. Almost immediately, Blinken, he hit back at Israel's comments. He came out saying that Gaza must not be reoccupied by Israel, but be governed by the Palestinians themselves. Essentially, a two-state solution. Gaza cannot continue to be run by Hamas. It's also clear that Israel cannot occupy Gaza. This is a clear message from the United States. America knows how volatile the situation is. If Blinken doesn't publicly reject the idea, this could spark an even bigger crisis in the Middle East. I mean, just look at Blinken's face. He looks like a broken man in a recent G7 meeting. It's like he has seen a ghost. The Arabs aren't listening to him and Israel doesn't take him seriously. America has to take steps to defuse the tensions in the region and that means getting Israel to agree to the bigger picture. But that won't be very easy. But let's talk about the war spending for a bit. This financial Halloween story isn't over yet. In fact, I think we are heading towards a spending apocalypse and economic Armageddon might be coming soon. And we know that war is expensive. It adds more government debt and channels money away from the real economy. And whether you support war spending or not, it doesn't really matter because it's coming real soon. In a big update, the US Senate has blocked the Republican bid to aid Israel and not Ukraine. And I believe there's only one way to interpret this. And that is the US government wants to send money to both Israel and Ukraine. And it doesn't matter if the Republicans want to stop sending aid to Ukraine. The Senate is controlled by the Democrats and Biden has veto powers. So Mike Johnson can try to push his agenda, but it'll get blocked by Biden and friends. It won't just be 14 billion going to Israel, but more money heading to fund Ukraine as well. We shouldn't be surprised if Biden gets his $100 billion request. And let's look into who will be the biggest beneficiaries of this military aid. In a Bloomberg story, Biden's military aid request for Israel would double Iron Dome Arsenal. 
the funds will include 100 Iron Dome launchers and 14,000 interceptors. Companies like RTX or Raytheon will be benefiting from a potential $4 billion budget for missiles. Now, I personally don't hold defense stocks, but if you do and the budget gets approved, prices might go up. The more escalations happen, the more war spending gets justified in Congress. And this latest piece of news could get approval to jack up the budget even further. According to the Pentagon, the US has breaking intelligence. They believe Russia's Wagner Group may be sending air defense systems to Hezbollah. Obviously, we have no idea what goes on behind the scenes and Russia and Wagner would definitely dispute this. But let's just assume it's true. If this gets deployed, just imagine the level of escalation risk this poses. What if it takes down a US fighter jet, right? Then the scenario will be unthinkable. How will America retaliate? Will they start to mobilize the carrier strike groups? So things are really heating up and war spending is on the brink of flying up. There's now an epic tug of war in the US Treasury market. On one hand, we have investors running to treasuries as a safe haven, a flight to safe haven. Then you have government spending threatening to spike yields back up if the Middle East crisis erupts further. According to the IMF, US government budget deficit is on track to exceed 8% of America's GDP. And let that sink in for a moment. And that's why Q3 GDP hit a mind-blowing 4.9% recently. It's the creation of all this debt that's propping up the US economy. So the bias is there for war spending to accelerate and more bonds to be issued. The economy is now trapped where if you slow spending down, the tide will go out and the swamp monster will reveal itself. A recession will most definitely come. And that's why I believe Biden will get his funding requests approved. Maybe not the full 100 billion, but the majority of it. It might be way more than just 14 billion dollars for Israel. More money is needed to keep the economy chugging along because the numbers are looking really bad. The yield curve inversion tells us that we should be heading into a recession. However, GDP is sky high thanks to government spending, but there's another indicator that's flashing red, and it's the unemployment numbers that's telling us something is really wrong in the economy. So here's the problem. Unemployment has flown up and it is triggering the ultra-reliable sum rule that predicts every recession. And here's the rule. If the three-month average of the unemployment rate is half a percent more than its low in the previous 12 months, the economy is in recession. And let me make it simpler for you. This is the chart of the US unemployment rate. We hit a low of 3.4% in January, but it has risen to 3.9% in October. So the longer unemployment remains at 3.9% or higher, the bigger the confirmation of a recession. Remember that government spending is already sky high, but unemployment is still rising. Knowing this, if you were the Biden administration, would you dare to scale back on war spending now? And here's one chart you must burn into your brain, into your mind. The US Q1 GDP was 1.1%, but out of this growth, 0.21% came from defense spending. Defense accounted for one-fifth of US GDP growth in Q1, which is quite shocking. So just imagine if Congress rug pulls Ukraine, right, and they stop giving financial aid. That will also negatively impact US economic growth. So we must prepare for more bonds to flood the market and more debt to accumulate in the system. I won't be surprised if Q4 GDP hits 4.9% or even higher. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Can America get the Middle East in order? And will war spending escalate even further? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.